He's conveniently come back briefly because Odin's summoned some dark powers from the universe and it's very costly, but he's come back to uh, retrieve Loki, who's running madness on Earth and, you know, in, in chaos, and also to ask some questions, you know, that Loki's been missing and now he's turned up on Earth, and so Thor wants to know, you know, why and how did this happen and where did we go wrong and what have you. It's a different sort of arc to, uh, you know, in Thor. He, he started, it was a, probably not more of an obvious arc. He started as an arrogant, petulant sort of kid and by the end of it had to become a noble warrior and learn some humility. In this film, um, you know, he, he, was the no, he begins as a sort of noble warrior with the right intentions, but all of that is then tested, I think, in the way he, um, you know, be, uh, decides to sort of, what's more important, his family values or, the protection of you know civilization you know or his personal relationship with his brother or the team he's fighting with now and has agreed to fight with um so it's sort of more subtle i guess but also his his arc is what's more important is the story's arc as opposed to his individual sort of journey yeah it's a kind of like the most dysfunctional family you'd ever meet i think um i mean josh said early on about you know they're all incredibly powerful but because of their abilities and their power they're very alone as well and I think um, because uh, you know or initially they come into this group and think that we don't fit together you know I run the world or I run this realm and you take care of that and yet because they're so odd and you know unique and powerful in their own ways they do fit together there's some comfort in that finally they kind of I think they probably feel slightly normal in amongst this group. Yeah, he's fantastic. I mean, he, um, he did, he started it all. He's kind of the, the godfather of the Avengers in a sense, you know. Um, he, he had two films under his belt, uh, you know, with the franchise before we had any really. Um, and so, uh, yeah, there's certainly been times, you know, a few times when I've said to him, oh, how do you navigate this? Or how do you, what do you think of this? And, and he's, he's very open with his advice and, you know, and, uh, and helpful. Um, but it's just a good bunch, you know. I mean, Robert is uh, is an actor, and you know, it's, everything he's done is incredible. And as is all of this cast. And so, watching all of them work and their different styles, and, and you know, getting everyone together in one big scene has, has been really exciting. In Mark Ruffalo, you don't see the Hulk, which is, I think, a perfect sort of contrast because it's it's that sort of vulnerability and that you know. Um, fear of what's to come if he does turn into that guy. He doesn't necessarily like who that guy is, you know. Um, it's not something that he's kind of an angry guy and then gets angry. He's this really nice kind of unassuming character. Uh, uh, but then if pushed in the wrong direction, he, you know, turns into this monster. And um, it's great seeing Mark play with that because he just has a uh, incredibly sort of endearing quality about him and uh, humility and, you know, he's a sort of... Uh, <laughs> there's no bravado, you know, no, and especially when you know who, what he can become. That's, I think that's what's the uh, really nice contrast.